I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I cannot be defeated and I will not quit. Welcome to Rama Praise, a worldwide broadcast bringing hope, help, and healing for over 20 years from Kenneth Hagen Ministries and Rama Bible Church in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And now, here are your hosts, Pastors Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Hello and welcome to Rama Praise. So glad that you're with us today. Of course, this is... Uh, July the 4th weekend. weekend. Yes. yes. A lot of celebrations. A lot of celebration yes. going on, and there should be. In fact, I'm, my message title is Celebrating Our Freedom. Yes. And, of course, we want to thank God. We live in a place where we can enjoy freedom of expression. And, you know, we don't need to take it for granted, honey. We need no. to thank the Lord every day that we do have that freedom. And as, you know, as we travel, have traveled all over the world, and I have traveled before you started traveling, I have been in places where they don't have that kind of That's freedom. That's right. That's right. And they, they, they're really controlled on how they can worship and so forth and so on. Yes. But, uh, you know, people have put their life on the line yes. so that we can have this liberty. And, of course, Christ died for us on the cross so we could have the, this freedom and our salvation. Yes. You know, I am... I spent three years in Uncle Sam's army, and I'm proud of it. I, I I did it for for several reasons. One is that I got drafted, and, <laughs> and and the other one is is because I believe in what this country stands for, and I was willing to celebrate uh, to give my life if necessary. In fact, every in every individual that goes in the military takes an oath that they will defend the freedom and the liberties of the United States even up to and including the expense of their life. Yes. I've, I've taken that. And I am, I am glad for this country. I'm glad I live in a country where we have freedom, both spiritually and naturally. Yes. And it's important that we do our part on the spiritual side to maintain this. And it's important that on the natural side that we maintain this freedom. Yes. And I want to... Thank everybody that is serving right now so that we so yes. we can have these liberties and these freedoms. So why don't we go right now where I'm talking about celebrating our freedom. In 1917, President Woodrow Wilson said this, this flag which we honor and under which we serve is an emblem of our unity and our power our thought and our purpose as a nation. It has no other character than that which we give it from generation to generation. The choice is ours. The American flag, it is not a symbol of perfection. No flag can be. Rather, the American flag is a symbol of freedom. Freedom to worship God as we please. Freedom to enjoy life without dictatorship and being told what to do. Yes, it's been an imperfect journey and it's been flawed and it's still flawed and this country is still inadequate in many, many areas of our society. But we still must stand together and unite under God because without God, there is no justice. Without God, there is no freedom. Without God, there is nothing. On this week that we celebrate independence and especially the 4th, let us thank God for our nation. As we gather together with family and friends, maybe sing and hear some hear patriotic songs and have some barbecue and all the food with family and friends, let us not forget what that freedom has cost. Amen. You know, we have to realize that both spiritual actions and natural actions are necessary to maintain our freedom. Spiritually, we need to be concerned about God's blessing 
upon our nation. Psalms 33, 12 says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance. The voice translation, the nation whose true God is the eternal is truly blessed. Fortunate are all whom he chooses to inherit his legacy. Amplified Bible said, blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his inheritance. Our nation, with all of its wealth and with all of our freedoms, is because we've been blessed by God. You know, without God's blessing, there will be no freedom. There will be no wealth. I don't know what they teach in history now, but when I was in school, they taught that when the people first came here, they came in search of religious freedom. And we can clearly see that God's hand has been upon this nation to a day, though it seems like we're in a crisis. You know, many have laid down the God-given right to call upon God and ask for his blessing in the nation. They've taken God about, out, of, out of about everything that they can. They've taken uh, the commandments off of uh, buildings. They've refused to have nativity scenes. But I want you to realize as a church, we must seriously pray and get on our knees because the nation that loses God is the nation that loses freedom. Our freedom depends upon the prayers of the church. As we celebrate our independence, one thing that should be our, our big concern is keeping our freedoms intact. This day, we need to recognize that our founding fathers dared to proclaim liberty. We must remember to honor all of those that have sacrificed their lives to establish freedom. Thomas Campbell said this, the patriot's blood is the seed of the freedom, freedom tree. You know, as we look around, it's obvious that the founding of this nation was to worship God, to be a place of religious freedom, to be a sending place, and it has been. America has sent more missionaries around the world than any other nation. But we, re we need to realize that without God, it doesn't happen. God needs a people that will walk in righteousness so that he can freely move on our nation's behalf. You know, in Proverbs 14, 34, it says, righteousness exalt a, exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I would say this, righteousness is a nation's greatest treasure. Oh, yes, we need military might. Yes, we need strong economy. Yes, we need to develop our resources and our infrastructure. Yes, we need education. Yes, we need technology. But greatest of all, we need righteousness, the righteousness of God. Right living will determine a nation's destiny. As you study the history of Israel, you can see this. When they were right with God, everything was great. When they sinned against God, everything became captivity instead of freedom. Not living righteously is not recognizing the one true God. Not recognizing God has been the downfall of many nations. The Babylonian Empire, if you want to study, I, I like history and I've studied a lot of history. The Medo-Persian, 
and then the great empire, the Roman empire, they all fell because of unrighteousness and sin. If we would consider reading the first chapter of Romans and the decline of that civilization Paul describes there, they refused to glorify God. They chose idolatry over true worship of God. They practiced every form of immorality. They became violent, deceitful, and proud. And history has proven that when that happened in those nations, they all failed. Today, let us determine in our own lives to live righteously under God. You know, freedom for mankind actually is a Bible concept. It, can, it comes from the Bible. The concept of liberty and freedom is seen all the way throughout the scriptures. Adam and Eve longed for freedom from sin because they had disobeyed God's command. Israel longed to be free from their captivity in Egypt. Moses came proclaiming liberty and told Pharaoh, let, God said, let my people go. Gideon Ray was raised up to deliver Israel. David fought bravely against the Philistines to keep them from capturing Israel. While the people of Israel were in captivity in Babylonia, they longed for their homeland. During the days of Jesus, the Jews longed to be free from the Roman tyranny. Jesus himself proclaimed at the beginning of his ministry in Luke 18, 19, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Christ came to set us free from the rule of Satan and his tyranny. The apostle Paul instructed us in Galatians 5, 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again unto the yoke of bondage. And then drop on down to verse 13 in that same chapter. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Freedom is something that God proclaims for every individual. However, freedom does not mean the absence of any rules or laws, some people would say. Real, mean, real freedom means that certain, certain laws and rules are put into effect to provide the greatest possibility of liberty for everybody. Real freedom all, always has its restraints and boundaries. In the earth, we have freedom to move, yet we are bound by the law of gravity. If we didn't have the law of gravity, those, shoot, those pews would be floating. All my, my, no, I would have to hold on to my notebook because it'd be floating away, and I'd be floating all around. Hello. You know, you have the laws of gravity and physics to restrict things from happening. We have the law of God that restricts us from some things, but it leads us to true spiritual liberty and freedom. Real freedom does not destroy and take away, but it gives. Now, real freedom doesn't give you the right to intrude on somebody else and their rights. You know, any freedom is for us to enjoy under God. 
my freedom cannot encroach on your freedoms. Your freedom cannot encroach on my freedom. And if we learn to read the Word of God, we find out that this happens as individuals love God, they work together in love. The one thing I like about this church so much is that we're all under God and we all serve one another and it don't make no difference what your background is, how rich you are, how poor you are, what your color is, it don't make no difference. We're all the same and we have the same freedoms because Jesus Christ died on the cross at Calvary to give us the freedom to live and worship together without prejudice. Hallelujah. You know, Christ said that he came to set men free. He came and went to the cross and there is, therefore the redemptive act of God was fulfilled. And he said in, in, in John 8, 36, therefore if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Christ paid the price for freedom when he died on the cross and he shed his blood. Before that, they had to sacrifice an animal every year for the covering of sin, but he went to that cross and he shed his blood once and for all for freedom. In Psalms 119.45, it says, and I will walk it at liberty for I seek your pre precepts. James 1, 25 says, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty continue and continues in it is not forgetful hear, hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. And then again, go to John 8, 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The Word of God will bring us the knowledge of liberty and freedom that comes through our acceptance of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God outlines a pathway from sin and, de and degradation. Just like our the Word of God is our constitution with God. We have a constitution that tells us how we can stay free right? This is, our, this is it right here with God. This tells us how to stay free with God and worship God. God has given us the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit to help us. In 2 Corinthians 3.17 it says, now the Lord is the Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, we can trust God and know as we follow him, he will lead us to victory and liberty. You only stay bound if you don't know Jesus Christ. Some say, well, I'm free. No, you're not. Until you know Jesus Christ, you don't know real freedom. Thank God when you know Jesus Christ, there become, now you become really free. Maybe you were free in the natural, but until you become free in the spiritual, you are not free. Thank God for freedom. And true freedom is spiritually and naturally. And it will, it will take each of us doing our part that we maintain these freedoms, both in the natural and in the spiritual. Today, I believe that it's time that we make a new commitment to God to pray for our nation. You know, I believe that if we will continue to serve God and believe God and pray for ourselves and for our nation, I believe that we will come out on the other side victorious no matter what people are saying or what people are doing if we people of God will rise up and pray, God will inter, in, in, intervene 
You know, it's time that we really believe what we say we believe. We believe that when we pray that he hears us and he'll do something about it. So let's pray for our nation and believe that he'll do something about it. Amen. You know, maybe some of you out there have never accepted the spiritual freedom by praying the prayer and accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I want to right now pray a prayer with you and I want you to repeat it after Miss Lynette as she repeats the prayer after me. Say this with me. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you for your son Jesus. Thank you for your son Jesus. He died. He died. On a cross. On a cross. That I might have spiritual freedom. That I might have spiritual freedom. He arose again from the grave. He rose again from the grave. And he's alive and well in heaven today. And he's alive and well in heaven today. And you said in your holy word. And you said in your holy word. That if I would believe those things in my heart. That if I would believe those things in my heart. And confess them with my mouth. And confess them with my mouth. I would be saved. I would be saved. I believe them in my heart. I believe them in my heart. I'm confessing them with my mouth. I'm confessing them with my and mouth. And I thank you now. And I thank you now. That I become a new person in Christ Jesus. That I become a new person in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer with us for salvation or in rededication, would you just go to your computer and go to partner service at rhema.org and let us know about it? We want to hear from you. Well, honey, yes. camp meeting is coming up. Oh, yeah. Just I a... will be so glad uh, that, we'll, that we're able to have camp meeting yes. here on the campus. Right. Uh, July the 19th through 24th, starting Sunday at 6 p.m. Right. And then Monday through Friday, 10 a.m., 2.30 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. We got a great lineup of speakers. There will also be uh, the Summer Youth, the Summer yes, Blitz. Yes, Summer Blitz. And yes. so they have a great lineup. And, and a great... we have things for, ch we have children's services as well. Okay, we're going we're gonna to have the, everything for the whole family. That's Just come right. and enjoy a week uh, right here at what we call Camp Meeting 2020. Now, many people don't know about camp meetings, but used to, when I was growing up, I mean, as, as, a, as a five, six, seven-year-old, uh, my dad, but of course him being a minister, we would go to the denominational camp meeting that they would have every yes. year. And it was outside in a, in a tent. And yes. many people came in and actually camped. I mean, they mm -hmm. had tents and so forth and so on. And then some of us would stay in at little motels. Yes. They didn't have any hotels back, big hotels no. back then. They had called <laughs> no, them motels. They did. And that's, and actually camp meeting came from that, if you'll go trace it, it goes back to the old Methodist camp meetings and many others had camp meetings in which they would come in and they would camp. Yes. And, and they, uh, so uh, that's how it got it started, but it's indoors. We got air conditioning. That's right. <laughs> and it's nice. <laughs> I've been at the other and I, I like this better. Uh, that's right. <laughs> and you know, honey, I, I just believe this is going to be a special camp meeting. Oh yeah, I believe so. I, I know that many states, they haven't been able able to be together as yes, a church. Right. Uh, thankfully, we have been able to be together since uh, the 1st of May. Yes. And I just believe that it's a great time for people all over the country, all over the country to yes. come together yeah. and have celebrate. Have a great time. Yes, yes, celebrate. Well, we have a special gift. Um, offer, our gift uh, offer. Yes. yes uh, it's very... your, your dad, it's a DVD about your dad, uh, how, to see, how to see spiritual gifts. Yeah, it's uh, what we call timeless teaching by my dad. Uh, we go back and we pull some of the things and some, some of, uh, have, have, uh, have never been seen before, but mm -hmm. some have. And this is, we call it timeless teaching by dad. And this is how, how to see spiritual gifts work in a greater measure. And he's talking about the spiritual gifts that are listed there in the Word of God. Yes. And three CDs by you called Our New Spiritual Realities. This is one of the things that I like to teach on the most about uh, who we are in Christ 
our realities because of who we are in Christ. Yes. So it's a, I, I, it's one of my favorite subjects to teach on. And of course, a CD by me called Keep the Fire Burning, and this is about prayer. Of course, you know yes. what my passion is, yeah, your passion is prayer. Is. Yes, yes. And so those are for a gift of $29 or more. So we just invite you. Um, to go and to Order those right now. That's Just right. Just go to your computer and order those right now. And know that we are enrolling to Rainbow Bible Training College for the fall of 2020. Yes. We will be here. We will right. have students coming in. Yes. Uh, so if you just uh, want to know more about the Word or if you feel a call of God on your life or if you need to just find your place, what God has for you, the plans that God has for you. I know we have many people that come, just, they, they don't know they they don't know what God wants for yes. them, so they come. First of all, you can do, you just study the Word of God. But when they get here, they as they go, get into study, they begin to realize where God wants them. Yes. How God, some of them uh, go into student ministries, which is children and youth. Some find out that hey, God wants me to go back and to help in my church, just yes. be in the, what we call the ministry of helps. Yep. Paul listed along with all the other ministry <laughs> gifts. And uh, some find out that they want to go on the mission field. That's right. And and others come and they study, and they they go back home and never expect to get into ministry. We've got a testimony of an individual, and then yes. all of a sudden things started opening up, and now they're in full time ministry. That's right. So never expected that. Never. <laughs> so. <laughs> However you are, whatever it is, hey, go to rbtc.org on your computer. Information's all yes. there. Sign up, and we're going to have a great time. That's right. Well, honey, I think it's time to get out of here. Okay, <laughs> and we want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, and, and healing, healing to, to the, the world. world. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And they're manifested through individuals as the Spirit wills. Thank God for manifestations of the Holy Ghost. How to see spiritual gifts work in greater measure. A DVD by Kenneth E. Hagan. Keeping that fire burning on the inside of you. And a powerful CD by Lynette Hagen. Keep the fire burning on the inside of you. When we become born again, we are a brand new person in Christ. Plus, our new spiritual realities, a three CD series by Kenneth W. Hagen. All four CDs and the DVD can be yours for a gift of only $29 or more by calling toll free 888 Praise 8. Or you can log on anytime, day or night, at rhema.org to order. For Canadian orders, log on at rhemacanada.org. Do it today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Kenneth and Lynette Hagen. Kenneth, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information about Rama, please call, write, or visit rama.org. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope help and healing for a hurting world.